Welcome to macOS Sonoma 14.1.1 on all kinds of unsupported Macs with the help of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1.2.1. But unfortunately, it's not fail safe, so let's talk about it in this video. So Apple just released macOS Sonoma 14.1 a few days ago and afterwards they just released a security hotfix 14.1.1. And the OpenCore Legacy Patcher also had a big release 1.2.0 and a few days later there was 1.2.1 but that was not directly connected to the new macOS version but that was more or less a bug fix for a quite important bug on an old iMac that I will show you later. But if you are planning on installing macOS on an unsupported Mac or already have installed a macOS on an unsupported old Mac, that might be Sonoma, that might be Ventura, Monterey or even Big Sur, I have some hints and some tips here in this video that might help you. At first, let's talk about what Mac models. You can or you should install macOS Sonoma, Ventura or Monterey. Second question would be when to install a new macOS version and the third would be how to install that macOS and basically here is the easiest guide that explains everything in detail how to install an unsupported macOS on an old Mac. But there are some hiccups and I'd like to give you, and that is the fourth chapter, tips and tricks and hints how to do it as flawlessly as possible and what you can do if something in between doesn't work as expected. Let's go. So let's start with the first question on what Mac models. Does it make sense to install a newer Mac OS like Sonoma, Ventura, Monterey or Big Sur? And here on my iMac 2011, Mac OS Sonoma 14.1.1 runs with the latest OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1.2.1. Since OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1.2.0, the Photos app doesn't crash anymore. But since 1.2.0, Apple TV just freezes the whole iMac as soon as a video starts playing. And so I thought, okay, so we did the update from 1.1.0 where the Photos app was crashing, but Apple TV worked, to 1.2.0 where it's other way around. But fortunately, the developers of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher just released the hotfix 1.2.1 a few days later and now both apps are working. So there was an issue with the graphic drivers, but right now the Photos app is not crashing anymore and Apple TV shows all videos either in picture mode or full screen mode without any graphic glitches. So that is the good news, but the bad news, there are still some things that doesn't work and I don't believe that will work in the near future. For instance, when I open the Maps app, there's just a black screen. The reason for that is that the Apple Map Kit, the software that creates those maps and the labels and everything, requires a newer metal capable graphic cards and these start around 2012. So if you have an original stock iMac or whatever Mac 2011 or older, no map will work in macOS Sonoma. The same with the weather app where there is a rain map or something like that, there is no picture, nothing. And that is the same in macOS Ventura and macOS Monterey because the latest macOS version where the Apple map kit was an older version that runs with those old graphic cards is in macOS Big Sur. And that brings me to the answer of the question, what Mac do you recommend at least for those new Mac OS's? I recommend 2011 Macs and older with Mac OS 11 Big Sur. And here is the proof to my theory that you should start installing Mac OS Sonoma on Macs 2012 and younger because that is a MacBook Pro 2012, that is a MacBook Air 2013 and with both MacBooks, no problems at all with macOS Sonoma 14.1.1 and OpenCore Legacy Petra 
1.2.1. There is no HEVC graphic acceleration, obviously, because these are 10, 11 year old graphic cards. But both of them can do H264 graphic acceleration, either ultra high definition or 4K. The browsing works, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, the Photos app, Weather app, no problem at all with the latest Macro Sonoma and OpenCore Legacy patcher. And that brings me to the second part of that video when should you install an update. I really recommend for everyone running an unsupported macOS, deactivate the automatic updates and wait. Wait until websites and YouTube channels like mine have reviewed an update. Is there a new OpenCore Legacy Patcher version needed? Is there one incoming? Are there problems? And that we give you a thumbs up like I do right now, that it's safe to update. And then just subscribe the channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss a new video and you get the update. It's safe, you can proceed. Or with that Mac models, I wouldn't update yet. So that is the Mac Pro 2012 cheese grater that is sitting below my desk. And as you can see, that doesn't went so smooth with the update. What happened? I just downloaded the update 14.1.1 and started the setup out of the downloads folder. Somewhere remaining 20 minutes, it just freezes completely. Same problems happened with the Mac Pro 2013 trash can. And so I thought, okay, let's try something else. I created a USB drive and then plug the USB drive in, just regularly boot it, but then it found the install macOS Sonoma on the USB drive and let this run through and that worked. At least for the Mac Pro 2013, I will just do this now for the Mac Pro 2012 and see if that works as well. And there's one more advantage when you create a USB drive. And this is right now chapter three. How should you install an update for unsupported Macs? I strongly recommend you download the version that you want to install in the OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Then you create a USB drive, plug it in, restart and select install macOS. Sonoma, Ventura, whatever, from that USB drive, that should be the most safest version to update. No worry if you have an installed macOS and you do that update, it will keep all your data and your files. But always make a backup if something doesn't work. Another advantage if you have a USB drive and do the update from there is that it automatically applies the root patches. So you don't end up with a new macOS version without graphic acceleration, without Wi-Fi, without Bluetooth, and you have to install the root patch then after the update is done. Because for some Macs, for some graphic drivers, the OpenCore Legacy Patcher requires a kernel debug kit, a KDK from Apple. That gets updated as well as macOS gets updated. And if you don't have internet connection, because there are no root patches, there's no Wi-Fi, then the OpenCore Legacy Patcher searches if it has a loosely fitting KDK. That was one of the most problems with the update for macOS Sonoma 14.1 that there was the KDK for 14.0 installed. You don't have internet connection, so it couldn't download the new KDK 14.1. And it used the KDK 14.0 for the root patch for a macOS 14.1 and that killed macOS. So the solution in most of the cases was download on another Mac the KDK 14.1 and then install that, install the root patches, which now use the correct KDK 
and then everything worked. And so that was already part of the fourth chapter of that video, tips and tricks how you can proceed if there are any problems. The first one is here also in my video. If you got a progress bar stuck around one third, try to boot into safe mode. So keep shift pressed and then in the open core legacy boot selector, select your Mac OS and it should boot into safe mode. And then you should be able to install all the root patches and should be able to boot up again. If you don't have a progress bar at all, here in this video, I describe in detail how you can just load the last sealed snapshot. That sounds very technical, but whenever OpenCore Legacy Patcher, for instance, installs the root patch, it creates a backup, a snapshot of your macOS kernel without root patches. And so you can just enter the terminal I described that in that video with all the commands. You can go to the terminal and command your Mac to load that last sealed snapshot back up and it should boot again. Remember always when there is an update all root patches are gone. So you have to apply the root patches again after the update except you're updating with a USB drive and that is what I recommend how to do that. If there's any problems with your Mac updating or installing macOS, try NVRAM reset. That's an easy fix for a lot of problems, especially when you don't have Bluetooth. For instance, my iMac needed two NVRAM resets and after that the Bluetooth was recognized correctly and it worked. Before it didn't. So if there's anything, just do NVRAM reset one, two, three times. I don't think that is, makes any sense to do it more often. And that is during boot, just keep command, alt or option, R and P pressed the same time. You hear the boot chime. And then after a few seconds, you hear another chime that is normally louder because it also resets the uh, volume that was saved. And you can do that to the third and the fourth chime. Then you have a three time NVRAM reset and then see if Bluetooth comes up or if uh, it just continues with the setup. So that's an easy fix and you don't delete any data, something like that. It's quite safe to do that. If you apply a root patch and the root patch is done and it says you want to reboot, don't click reboot click the other button and then just scroll upwards to the beginning and read through that log if there's something like KDK 14.1 already installed skipping which means it's skipping downloading the KDK or if it says okay timeout no internet connection loosely checking for KDK, oh, found KDK 14.0. If that's the case, don't reboot because it just used KDK 14.0 for the macOS version 14.1. The link is also down in the video description. Go to Dortenia's GitHub repository to download the correct KDK, install it, and then root patch again without rebooting in between. If you don't have internet connection, maybe use another Mac or another Windows PC and copy that downloaded KDK on a USB drive, put it onto your Mac without internet connection, install it. And when you do the root patch again, click again, view lock, scroll up and see if it now used KDK 14.1 for the root patch. If yes, it should be safe to boot now. Don't reboot in between. The last thing, the last hint, if there are problems installing your Mac OS on unsupported Macs, try a different USB drive. Maybe this one 
is broken, is, has a hardware error, or some USB drives um, just have errors when you write constantly like 16 gigabytes of a macOS installer onto them. They get hot, they get problems. Maybe you just choose a different USB drive. Maybe you just choose a different USB port. Especially when you have uh, expansion cards in your Mac Pro, like USB 3.0 cards, something like that, use a regular USB 2.0 port. If you have a problem downloading, maybe don't use Wi-Fi. And if you have an Ethernet cable, just plug it in and use wired Ethernet. And if nothing helps, I recommend you go to our Discord channel and ask your question there. There are 500 members already willing to help and uh, willing to maybe share their own experiences. It's a great community. Or just give me a comment in the video below and some of the other viewers may answer that or I am obviously uh, here and answering comments below the video and trying to join as often as possible to the Discord server. So I really, really thank you for that great community. Other than that, have fun here on my channel. Stay tuned for the next videos. See you soon. Bye bye.